I'm here in the W.W. W. Campbell Building in front of the Department of Astronomy main office. Uh, we were here about a month ago to deliver a letter of protest from the UC students, uh, basically talking to the astronomy department here that UC Berkeley and the UC systems are, have already pledged about 50 to 175 million dollars towards the 30 meter telescope. So as a follow up to this, ask last time to meet with them and to see us and to recognize the humanity of the Kanakamali people. Um, we're here to follow up with them, so you come on, let's follow up. I saw someone earlier that walked out that way. Uh -huh. So I'm kind of curious. We posted this on the internet earlier, and uh, it they probably are aware of the fact that we're coming up today. Uh, I think last time there were some people that were a little bit surprised by our coming, and uh, I think probably at this point they probably cleared out the building. Uh, they'll even have a front desk person over here. And I think that they just don't want to face us. And so basically, I think that it kind of shows that they don't want to recognize mm -hmm. our humanity. They don't want their people to understand that they're participating in destruction. That they don't want to connect the dots between what they're going to do what their people here are going to do, and to the real human beings that they're going to hurt on Mokwa Kweave. So we respect that. We're peaceful, loving people, and we will honor and respect the space that they have in a way that they won't respect ours. So on this day, on this Mauna Kea Awareness Day, even if we could not meet with the astronomy department, of the very powerful UC Berkeley, three people. They're fearful of that, fearful of the mana of that. We will honor their space in a way that they will not honor ours. So mahalo Vanui for joining us. We're documenting the process stuff that happened. Okay, so can you tell us what happened? Okay, so... Um, I drove, drove up from Kumeyaay Lands because that's where I just happened to be. I don't get to be in my home on Makikila right now. So I came up from Kumeyaay Lands and I looked up the night before what I'm supposed to do. And it says there's going to oh, be a Kumeyaay sign. Kumeyaay Lands is, can you, can in you San Diego. Sorry. San Diego, sorry, San so Diego. it's far away, yeah? So um, that there's supposed to be a sign up sheet outside that you sign. So I drove up and um, I asked the information guy where the meeting was and he said he didn't know. And so I came into the building, but I was very early. And then I heard that we were, there was going to be a march. And I got confused where, whatever. So I did not look further at that moment. Where's the sign-up sheet? So I go, I meet up with everyone. We do our march. We come back. And it's still my opinion, my impression, and I think those of others, that there's supposed to be a physical sign-up sheet that we're supposed to sign up. Well, that's what it said on the website. Right, that's what it says. But as soon as we got here, um, they sent out a representative uh, from who's from you know, back an home, advisor, from, yeah. from, from Mount, you know, who's from back home, um, 
and he was explaining to us all the rules now that we have to abide by, that we have to come and put our signs in this protest area, and, and that we weren't going to be able to take anything in. And uh, no water bottles. Right, and no water no. bottles. Oh. You both want to leave your signs on the outside and somebody can watch, that's fine. Oh, you just can't bring them inside. Well, then I guess we're going to have to set up a sign display on, on the, the outside. Yeah, uh, on the... On you, just, you, would ha you can set up a display. This is the protest area oh. where you can put stuff all along where the barricades are. You folks can put stuff over there and line. So I would probably let's have at least one person watch it, though. Because there's nobody watching, people may, you know, touch stuff that's not supposed to be touched. But yeah, you can put them out there so the public can see as they're walking by. Because all of this is like a secured area, so it's not going to be a public people, yeah, coming by. Okay, kind of miss. Now the water jugs, is it like going to the airport? It's kind of like going, yeah, except there's no, you can't even bring in the water bottles. Okay. Yeah, so you can leave them, like some people just kind of left them to the side okay. and just had somebody watch and says, just don't touch this stuff. But yeah, but once you folks do that, then we can walk you folks inside and then get you signed up for the public comment. Okay, thank you. Last verse. Yeah, yeah, mahalo, yeah, yeah, yeah. mahalo. So the protest area is all the way out here? This is the area designated. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, just like those Mona rules they wanted to make. Yeah. Exactly the same thing, huh? I was getting a little anxious because it was getting close to the 1230 start time and we still have to sign in. And he said, oh, well, there's a sign in sheet. So I'm still thinking there's a person with a sheet. There's a person with a sheet. And so after much discussion about where we're going to put our things, he said they were going to take us around the back and that is not an entrance that normal every, normally anyone can go through. I saw a sign that that sidewalk was actually closed. Uh, so they brought us in the back uh, today. But by then, when we got inside, we're again trying to have to figure out what we can take in, what we cannot take in, go through security, and then there's no sign-in sheet. Okay, can we get everybody lined up this way? Can we get, can get the line going this way, please? Oh, I told her to sign if she has a medical card that she can make. She has a medical she needs her card. Food, yeah. Okay, so I just need you to open your bag so I can take a visual. Okay. Go ahead. Can we get everybody lined up that way, please? Not a problem. They're not allowed to have food, cans, water bottles, like huge signage, stuff like that. What about backpacks? The backpacks can go in, they just need to be screened. Oh. Um, so like if, you know, if it's a student, like obviously they're not going to No food. No food, no water bottles, cans, stuff like that. So they can either throw them out or um, no one's really going to be in this area. So they can probably just have to throw their water bottle around. Hi, okay, so 
I've got a few things. Okay. Just a guitar. Uh, that is a an ukulele. Yeah. Ukulele. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. So each each bag, each compartment, you can have to open it up so I can take a visual. Okay. Okay. So. And I don't want to touch your instrument because I can't afford okay. to. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Appreciate you, brother. Okay, I need you to place your bag on the table. I don't have a seat. Okay, you have the keys and your uh, cell phone. Okay, grab those and uh, go for it. And, uh, what, no more sugars for us, man? Huh? No, 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 how long is the sticker? Most people are just place them somewhere on the shirt. Because if you can go in and out, if you lose it, you can. Place it on the table and open it up so I can take it. All right. Slide it on the table and you'll come up with a wand. You know what I did? Oh yeah, don't sticker. Use, don't use that because it'll okay, fall this away. is my yeah. sticker. That's my sticker. Just you want my name? And by oh, the, the time security we got wasn't in, fast either. Right. By the time we got in, the last person giving any kind of testimony was at the microphone, and then there was nothing in. So they gave us stickers to testify, but yet there was no opportunity. So it was confusing in that regard. Um, so apparently, there's an open meeting tomorrow for public comment. I'm still not confident how I would go about doing that. So I'm gonna make sure I find out because I'm not leaving here till I do find that out. But um, it was quite complicated and the information about no water bottles, no food, no signs was not on their website. So they, they amped up the resistance for some reason, you know, just because. And the only way to, you know, I submitted electronic form and I said that this is a request to testify. So on that agenda item mm -hmm. today, mm -hmm. I don't recall them calling anybody's name or asking if anyone was there. Um, so I, I find that offensive or confusing uh, designed to make it difficult to testify right and we had to leave students out here with all this stuff right for right. that whole time and um had to arrange how yeah. people all the stuff we couldn't take in was going to get watched yeah. Yeah. yeah it's really it's really an amazing thing to see because just going to the restroom there were four california police officers there were all the police officers in the front and then the security. I'm just wondering what, what, why, why do they feel so threatened? I mean, they're a board of regents about education. Why is that threatening? You know? Anyways, yeah, I, I'm just I, I, yeah, I know. I, I, know. I, I, found it, I found it interesting too that it has to be so secure. You know, maybe they have had problems with other groups in the past. I don't know. Um, uh, well, maybe, maybe but it, it's, there did seem to be a high level yeah. of security for the number of what 15 people that were in there. Um, yeah, it, it yeah. Was and the subject matter. Yeah, you know, I mean, this a university is a place where debate is to occur. That's why we have universities. It, it but this is a way of su suppressing that, and it looks really bad. I mean. Listen, I was at the United Nations when the General Secretary Kofi Annan was arriving, and that was a lockdown that had barriers in the front. It had all the search and things. But back in the day, 
in the UN, there's these little areas, boxes at your table. When I asked the security before, what's that box for? And he says, oh, that's for your arms. So arms, people with arms could go and put their arms in the box underneath their desk because they're coming out of war-torn areas, okay? But even the United Nations allows them to bring in arms because they don't feel safe without them, see? That's the United Nations. This is the University of California. Like, what are you doing over here? Making it so like that, that you're so afraid of that. Like, this is a culture of fear. And the question is why? Why, you know? So, anyway, it's just a, I don't know. It's a, they had a black hawk helicopter flying over us. No, I know. Right? Like, and really close. Right over. And interrupting Uncle Liko's song. I know. Buckle Hole Alame, by the way. Right. <laughs> yeah. the song. The was kind there of you go. It, it hasn't perfect. ended. Like yeah. George said. Like George said, the last concert before they left for that island never to be seen again. Going to Kaholave is not going to stop the bombing on Kaholave. We have to come outside. So we got some catching up to do and we're here to catch up. You know, that's, I mean, it's, you know, and that, that's really an important thing. Sometimes you gotta get, why are we here? Because it's so bad in Hawaii. It's so bad in this generation the, for the sins of the fathers from 1893. It's so bad now. They don't care. It's as if nothing. It's like the Titanic. You can't sink the Titanic. Watch what happens. But it's shame. It's, it's shameful. Shame. Absolutely. Oh Why does the Board of Regents of the University of California system need to be like this? And I think the answer is because the university system is a you are. just the power of the pule and why we come here and aloha is to help actually expose some of that. All instruments will need to stay outside of the venue. If you want to leave them over here by the fence line, you can have somebody watch them so that they don't get tampered with or but anything we don't like that. Have any, how, how do we have someone sign? How do we have all of us sign up for testimony? I don't know, but you're, you're not going to be if, able to take them inside the venue. Oh, I can't. Why, why did you? Why did you? Uh, if, if need be. Because we have we have policies that are in place and rules that we're utilizing, so we're not allowing any food or drink to go in. All bags are being searched and there's no instruments and no sign. But there wasn't an, a rule about instruments yesterday. There was, we didn't allow those in, so the guitars were left outside. Right, in the lobby. In the lobby, but that was because that's where the public entrance was yesterday for that open comment. Today the public entrance has changed because it's a bigger meeting and we're expecting more people. So those are, again, not allowed to go past that area, which is these magnetometers here, so they'll have to stay out here. Well, can they just stay right at the magnetometers? Because that would be the safest place to leave them, seeing as we're not going to be able to just, you know, we, we can't leave anybody out because we all need to speak. If you, if you leave them there, that's fine. But just so you know, the security personnel that's here, they're not responsible, they're not responsible oh, that's for this. My only question is, is, is why we weren't informed yesterday of that that was going to be the case because we had instruments yesterday well yesterday and the information was relayed that you could take the instruments inside that happened to be the public entrance which was the lobby there the public entrance is moved today and tomorrow to out here because of the number of people that we're trying to accommodate so the same information stands true it's just that the, the location has changed the instruments that they okay. have so, okay. uh, if you would just take a look inside of them make sure that they're looked at and then they can be put to Put to the side here. Where can I leave it? Back over here. Uh, yeah. It's got to be on the way. There you go. Uh, yeah, that's good. 
Uh huh. Oh, the pool can't go in either. No, no, oh. no food. No. It's no like. Okay. Uh, we need to leave instruments because we're not allowed to take them in. So you, you'll just put it next to my ukulele because the sun is going to come up, and and if it's damaged, we don't want to be stuck here. Like. Put it up against the wall, though. Sit this up on the thing there. We got to be able to come through here. Oh okay. yeah, sure. Thank you. Okay. And we're not responsible now. Okay. I mean, the, 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 uh, just to be clear, from my viewpoint, the university, I'm not going to hold you guys responsible, but the university is responsible. I just want well, it on we record. Have to take up with them because I don't think they're yeah. responsible if you leave stuff laying around. Yeah, exactly. I, I, know their, I know their position. I'm just, I'm just saying that if anything happens to my ukulele, I'm certainly holding them Why responsible. That's, because we were allowed to bring it in yesterday to the, to the lobby area. Oh, wow. Yeah, so they, cha they, they changed it and didn't oh, tell yeah, us. Now today, they, they're not letting anything in the building that shouldn't come in. Good morning. I have to be able to see to the bottom. Oh, boy. So, they let me bring in my food yesterday because I have medical reasons. So. Open up your bag. You guys, open up your bag so we have to oh, be able to open, see to okay. the bottom. Sorry, sorry, sorry. There, and... You have to move stuff around. Oh, okay. You have to All be right. able okay. to see to the bottom. Oh, okay, okay, okay. It's just my bags of bags. Huh? You guys should go in and find a seat. Get the seat. We're not letting people in. Oh, you're not letting people. Okay, I'll hit seat. Okay, so you have to pull stuff out so I can see to the bottom. Okay, okay, okay. Sorry, just a second. Could you hold this for me? Thank you. All right, that's the bottom. That's fine. Okay. Go ahead and stuff everything back in. Okay. Now these pouches over here. Open up every okay. section this, of your bag. This one? This one? Okay. Uh, Even the tiny little ones? Yeah, you have oh, to see all the way to the bottom. Yeah. These border regions are so scared of mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. Hey, goodness. Can't trust nobody nowadays. Mm -hmm. Get your phone. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Oh, can I slide this? You're good. Just get oh. your feet. Oh, just get my thing. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Melanie, are you okay? I'm gonna go. I'm good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah? Okay. okay. I'm coming through right now. Mahalo. Okay. okay. Let me call to order. Meeting of the Board of Regents for Wednesday, March 13th. We'll be doing the roll call after public comment. Uh, this is our open session. Um, to our guests in the audience, thank you for being here. Welcome. Um, the secretary is now going to review the procedures and ground rules uh, for public comment. We have an extraordinary number of folks signed up. Uh, we normally would set aside uh, at least 20 minutes for public comment. We're going to double that to 40 minutes, but we may not be able to hear everybody. So the secretary will try to be uh, focusing on uh, making sure we're covering all the issues that want, that are desired to be presented. So let me turn to the secretary, Ann Shaw. Thank you. The notice you received when you entered the auditorium set out rules for public comment today. If you'd like to review these guidelines please, and need a copy, please raise your hand and our staff member will get you one. As Chair Kiefer indicated, we have 123 individuals who signed up to speak this morning. Uh, each individual speaker will have up to a minute to address the regions. I know that a few of you, just a couple um, groups, have pooled their time to a, one speaker. That one speaker will get two and a half minutes. I don't give you a warning, however, at the end of your time, my little beeper will go off. So please be mindful of that time uh, limitation so that we may hear from as many speakers as possible this morning. And as Chair uh, Kiefer indicated, we'll go for 40 minutes. There's a microphone at the front of the uh, audience. I'm going to call five names at a time. Because we have so many speakers on so many different issues this morning, I'm not going to necessarily call you in the order that you signed up to speak or that you appear on the list. So I'm going to do my best to um, hear from representatives, call on representatives from all the different issues. Sometimes if there's a whole group of you that have signed up for a particular issue, 
Um, I may just say, pick three of you, and then you guys can pick amongst yourselves which you, you want to send up to speak. So I'm going to call the five at one time. Please be ready at the microphone when your time has come to speak. To hear from as many speakers as possible, the regents do not use these public comment periods for an exchange of speakers. Regents' questions resulting from your comments will be referred to appropriate staff. Written material is also important to the regents. You may give anything you've brought with you for the regents to our staff member who's out in the audience with you. Those materials will be available to regents for the duration of the meeting. Also, if you don't finish your statement and you have it in writing, you may leave it here too. So once again, I'm just going to uh, select uh, five speakers, not necessarily in order. If we do still have time when I get to the end of my list, I will circle back. Also, I know some of you, some um, speakers are not in the room, but I have someone out there that will get those people in the room if their name is called. So this morning, we'll first hear from Eduardo Perez, Kioloha Piscata, uh, and then there's um, many of you signed up to discuss the same talk, but 30-meter uh, telescope. So after um, Ms. Piscotata, Ms. Piscotata, sorry, um, maybe three others from 30-meter telescope group may speak. So that'll be our five. Edward Perez, Eduardo Perez, is he here? Um, okay. Uh, good morning. My name is Eduardo, Eduardo Perez, and I am a second year student here at UCLA and I am also an undocumented student that will be directly impacted by the tuition increase for non-resident students. Increasing non-resident tuition is incredibly hypocritical and contradicts the already performative message of diversity and acceptance that the UC preaches. There are signs all across this campus that boast, UCLA welcomes your race, UCLA welcomes your immigration status, but all UCLA does is tokenize this diversity when it is beneficial for them and does not prioritize affordability or the retention of students on this campus. If you're going to use me as a, as a statistic for how inclusive your campus is, start with addressing issues of tuition and financial access. Do not vote to increase the tuition of the thousands of non-resident students that contribute to the UC. Thank you. Thank you. The people are pulling time with you, yeah? Okay. Carla, who's outside. And two people are pulling, I'm, I'm just repeating. repeating, two people are pulling time for me. Okay, and their names, so I can, don't call on them. Carla. Okay, I have that name, thanks. And who else? I'm not sure. That's okay, go I'll ahead. just begin. Okay, um, go ahead. Aloha, my name is Ke Aloha Pichota. Mahalo for giving me the opportunity to speak. I came here from Hawaii. Um, this is about Mauna Kea. Mauna Kea is our place of origin, our creation place. It is a place of our heavenly realms and our akua, and it is being threatened by a project that this university is supporting, and that is the 30 meter telescope project. We've reached out for many, many years. We've been involved in both state and federal cases, and we've prevailed in both of those in previous projects that this school has also supported, known as the Keck projects. We stopped the 10 um, more telescopes during that time. We recently were in the Supreme Court, in which case we did not win. However, we do plan to continue our litigation in the lower courts and work our way back up. We didn't win in the Supreme Court of Hawaii because the Supreme Court of Hawaii just cheated. <laughs> they didn't actually read our stuff. We waited for 20 years to get there, and this is this is the lawlessness that we are facing. And what this body needs to know is that the state of Hawaii is going to use this project to arm themselves and enforce and be heavy handed with the Hawaiian people. And we have been peaceful and we intend to continue to be peaceful. 60,000 people signed a petition in four days asking for the desecration on Mauna Kea to stop and the arrest to stop also of the kia'i, the earth protectors. And so we will continue that stand, but we're here to ask you to please think about this project. We have held this project up beyond the decal survey. So it is, it is going to be irrelevant when the large, extremely large telescope becomes online. The TMT will already be irrelevant. And we're also here to ask you that we, we are here to work with you. 
Because as indigenous people, if you're indigenous science or modern science, we all agree that the earth needs help. What, what we need now is to put our efforts to help the earth. And yes, we support astronomy, we're not against it, but there's already 93 world-class sites where astronomy is being done. Time. Okay, uh, mahalo for your time and please consider. Thank you. If, if there's one other member of the group that would like to speak. Good morning, aloha. My name is Liko Martin. I was born in the Hawaiian Islands and I am uh, here to uh, provide uh, some information so that this body can make a proper assessment uh, with regard to the TMT. I'd like to open with reading a letter recently, a recent letter uh, stated December 2018 from, from this is a section, section here, here from, from Professor, Professor Alfred Desaias, Geneva School of Dip Diplomacy and International Relations. And he, this is in quotes. 126 years after 1893 in Hawaii being held under U.S. occupation for 126 years. This is the confirmation of this. In quotes, the lawful political status of the Hawaiian Islands is that of a sovereign nation state in continuity but a nation state that is under a strange form of occupation by the United States, resulting from an illegal military occupation and a fraudulent annexation. As such, international laws, the Hague and Geneva Conventions, require that governance and legal matters within the occupied territory of the Hawaiian Islands must be administered by the application of the laws of the occupied state. In this case, the Hawaiian Kingdom, not the domestic laws of the occupier, the United States. That given that information, you can look forward to this year, the resolutions will be going before the United Nations. Myself, I have filed many reports with the United Nations for a resolution to correct the status of the Hawaiian Islands. Presently, the status is a state of Hawaii is a federal corporation, which is technically confined to the 10 mile square of Washington, D.C. And um, as Dr. Desaias has pointed out, some strange form of government. Getting right to the point of the, uh, the University of Hawaii at this moment, uh, when autonomy was granted by this corporation, it basically violated Geneva Convention 4 when you take the public institution and you make it a private business. And at the same time that this has been happening in Hawaii for almost 10 years now, uh, we have great problems. So the information that I'm trying to bring to you is so that you can get an idea of what we're dealing with in Hawaii, respect to the TMT Thank and you. the almost, position of the sentence. University of Hawaii, okay? that it comes under question of what they're doing. It's a real big conflict of interest here. Okay, so thank you very thank much. Thank you very much. And um, I did let you, fin I did want to hear, the, uh, the regents wanted to hear your entire statement, so I did let you go over. So I think we're gonna move on to another um, topic now and call on some others. If there's time, we'll circle back to other speakers. Hi, my name is Sabina and I'm a senior sociology major at UC Santa Cruz. My friends and I have driven all the way from Santa Cruz during our week 10 when we should be studying for finals because we are in solidarity with workers, with AFSCME workers and with OPTI workers. It took us seven hours to get here and it was so hard just to be able to speak because you all are supposed to be representing us. But what I'm here to say is that workers are the backbone of the UC. Opti workers have been calling out the inequality at the UC while chancellors and top executives are receiving six figures. The average Opti worker has a little over 54,000 per year, which is not nearly enough to pay for rent in San Diego, Los Angeles, Santa Cruz, Berkeley, and low pay has also led to low retention of workers because they can't even afford to stay. Ask solidarity with Opti because they know what it feels like to be devalued by the UC and so do students. We have been raising these concerns about inequality at the UC over and over again, and the UC has refused to listen to us and has refused to address our concerns. This is not okay. The fact that the lowest paid workers on campus, the members of 
me $32.99. Our 92% people of color, immigrants and women, is bad enough. This is inexcusable for the UC to Thank refuse you. marginalized people their basic needs. Additionally, privatizing childcare at the UC is inexcusable. I'm also going to keep speaking because Thank Nicole you. from Beyond the Score was not able to speak and you did not allow them time. And I think that is incredibly rude. Standardized testing and admissions is ultimately made to restrict low-income students from higher education. It does not measure ability to succeed in college rather than, and instead, it actually measures socioeconomic class. As we saw in yesterday's news, the rich can simply buy their way into UCLA. Low-income students have to work harder and have to overcome many more obstacles than rich students, and yet low-income students are admitted to UCLA at lower rates because of a score on a classist and racist exam. The rich can simply pay for someone to take the exam for them and not even have to take the exam at all. As members of the impacted community, Beyond the Score supports the end of required standardized okay, tests in UCLA's admission over. processes. Okay, that, as we described and discussed uh, with the speakers prior to you, uh, and we talked, we're already 15 minutes past our time, and as we indicated, we extended the time for additional speakers. That'll be the, the end of public comment, uh, and we'll continue with the rest of the meeting. Thank you very much for those who, who spoke. Let me address the... Um, oh, you know I'm going to ask you to clear the room. I'll be with, yeah. Documenting the police presence. This is just so incredibly so much. Oh wow. Must be really scared of students, huh? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Wow, those aren't even the same ones that Kim has. There's so many. Yesterday, um, we had everybody signed up to speak, and they said that they were going to have people. And and Ke Aloha you and Uncle Liko did speak. We didn't. Um, the live stream apparently has not updated. But can you can you kind of summarize what has what happened? Okay. Well, first of all, they were going to allow three speakers to four speakers and then they cut the last two off, correct? And um, so only myself and Uncle Nico testified. And, um, and so, yeah, it's been a gauntlet here, by the way. Um, nothing against the police, but the university, it's very shameful, you know, that they have so many police and um, and have to search everyone and they have a huge barricade it's like the United Nations when the Secretary General comes in you know but that's that's a real deal where they have real threats this is a place where there's students and people who who are just trying to get an education and they have helicopters and they're like Black Hawk kind you know flying and they flew over us and circling and we were us. marching yeah and they were filming us um, while we're just over here and I'll, by the way I want to make a note that we are honored to be here with the Teamster Union and the other union people who showed up yesterday 
to tell them they're going to go on strike maybe um, and things like that and then also they're trying to raise the uh, uh, out-of-state tuition which is going to affect uh, many of the undocumented people and in fact they many people believe that that's why they're doing it so that they can identify them them and it's very it's very unalloy you know and kind of shame um, this institution is really making me feel um, kind of shame for them. Anyways, so we did get to speak. Do you want me to talk? Yeah. About could you say what you what you said? Um, basically, we asked them to divest. We asked them instead to join the indigenous people of the world, along with the people of Hawaii, to do better in the world, to raise the standard of Aloha. Because no matter if you're Coming from the indigenous science or modern science, we all agree the earth is very, needs help and we need to help earth immediately. We inform them that the state is going to use this project to arm against our people. And I know the state likes to think that we're hyperbolic. However, let me just say this, they did show up at the legislature and ask for 2.5 million to do exactly that either the arm against Kia'i on Mauna Kea and or the homeless, okay? So either way, I mean, homelessness is not a crime last time I checked. And in fact, we should be working to help them. And the Kia'i are not breaking any law. They're standing on our land and asking for no more desecration. We told them that we've stopped the project for more than 10 years and by the time they get it built it will be obsolete so they should Would really be. yeah it won't be built but by the time you know they would even get around to it, it and that we were we will continue to stand peacefully but they need to take note that they are going to be the heavy hand corporation corporation university you know um, that will be arresting indigenous people. Uh, and so we came here to ask them to join with us to do better in the world. But as we've found out, the, um, the university system here is again like a private business and very, uh, Kaneali, can you follow up? You're gonna have to speak up a little bit because it seems like the regions are having a, 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 a dance uh, party. <laughs> party. <laughs> Uh, so today we're going to be speaking, um, I'll be speaking as part of being a student in the UC system. Um, so we're definitely going to be giving them strong, uh, strong comments today about their investments into the TMT and how this is failing students in this system and how it's affecting our law week as well. So stay tuned. I want to point out a couple things. That yesterday was an amazing day because I guess some really amazing scandal broke out relating to this school <laughs> that involves some of the regions and um, what else happened? Oh, a worldwide internet failure. <coughs> yeah. While you were talking, yeah, while, while, we were while talking. you were talking, oh. that's when the internet went down. That's why our yeah. live stream <laughs> started but is not available yeah. of your testimony. Yeah. Let me say a little bit, a couple little bit things more about uh, like in dealing with this scandal, okay? Scandal basically involves somebody paying, rich people paying in for their students, uh, for somebody to take their exams, infiltrating uh, athletic... Uh, uh, Photoshop. And stuff like that. But the, what it points out is that look at a system in Hawaii, the University of Hawaii, which I believe really needs to come under fire, okay? Let's look, you know? Because of the autonomy that was granted to it by the corporation, it takes it out of the public purview. In other words, you know, they've left us out of the out of the equation. And I'm sure if they did an audit, which really should be done when this issue comes before, is put squarely before the legislature. Okay, to yank that back, that is it. That belongs to the public. Okay, and um, that I'm I'm sure that they would have. I mean, I'm not sure, but the chances are that you have the same type of payoffs, uh, the briberies, all of the money that's been handed out by the TMT investors to sort of buy their way in. And, you know, really the, one of the points is stop bringing your old technology to Hawaii. We've had enough of it.
okay? Don't bring your, uh, you know, stuff to Hawaii. Okay, gotta add more. Um, the other thing we need to remember is, we did tell them this, I think. Um, we've stopped their projects ever since they were involved also in the Keck project. Remember the Keck and NASA project? that we sued in federal court and state court and that we prevailed in. And ever since that time, they, no development has occurred on Mauna Kea. So these guys were involved in, involved in the other, you know, big telescope development. The really important thing that I'm hoping they understand also is that uh, all of our Pacific brothers and sisters are standing with us here. And I want all of our people back home to know that been a real a huge presence, Kelo. Uh, if the people back home could see the the, uh, the amount of people that are here from the, the Pacific Islands, you know, from the Pacific area, it's really nice to, to touch base with them, listen to their languages, see the features, see in the DNA, the connection of how close the peoples of the of, of Oceania and uh, are related to the continental peoples here and they very much support us. From here, we will be going back up, and so glad Kealoha is here to give another teaching at the uh, University of Santa Barbara and other places. And uh, we will continue to do everything, and um, not just to help ourselves, but to help the indigenous people here and bring that awareness to humanity of uh, the direction that we need to go. Mahalo. And Kaneali, can you give a few words about the, from a student perspective? Good just morning. Are you guys already all signed up? I believe so. Let, let, let's let double check. check. All right, I want to call to order a meeting of the Board of Regents, uh, the open session. Please identify yourself before you begin. To hear from as many speakers as possible, the Regents do not use these public comment periods for an exchange with speakers. Their questions resulting from your comments will be referred to appropriate staff. Written comment is also important to, uh, to the regents. If you brought any materials with you, please give it to our staff member, Claire, who's out in the audience with you. And if you don't finish your statement and have it in writing, you may give it to Claire also. So this morning we will hear from Lalani Teal, Carla Thomas, Terrell James Connellia Williams, uh, Kialoa Piscata, and uh, I understand Liko Martin is pulling to Kialoa, so she will get Two minutes. So is Lalani Teal here? Just speak yes, in any order we, you want. You know, I know yeah. that the two of you in particular were uh, left from yesterday's discussion, so please go ahead and take the uh, microphone first. Um, I'm also going to be pulling uh, Uriah Blackwell. His name should be, I believe, in the 30s oh, or 40s. Yeah. Um, sorry, he's number. He's further down my list. So okay, so you'll have two minutes. Yes, please. Okay. I can get this lifted actually. Six four. Thank you. Aloha to the UC Board of Regents. My name is Taro James Kanye Ikeiki Okaina Williams. I'm a Kanaka Maoli, an Indigenous Hawaiian. I'm a current graduate student at the University of California, Riverside, um, pursuing a Master's of Business Administration, man, uh, concentrating in management. Uh, I'm here to talk to you today about Mauna Kea and the UC's investments into the 30 meter telescopes that is being built in my country, the Kingdom of the Hawaiian Islands. Um, for you folks who may not know, um, in order to begin construction of that project, it requires a $1.4 billion to $2 billion bond before constru construction begins. That's coming out of student fees. So this directly impacts students of this university system. Um, according to the 30 meter telescope website, that amount is 16.3%. However, according to fiscal reports of the UC, there's no information provided about this amount of money, which means that the UC is not transparent about where our financial investments are going. They're not disclosing all this information, which is supposed to be provided to the students of this system. Um, so my assumption is that because it's only 16.3% presented on the TMT website, it's possible that it's actually more than that percentage. So there is a possibility that there might be financial fraud occurring as well. 
So that's something that may call for immediate investigation about these financial investments. Um, Mauna Kea is the genealogical pinnacle of the Kanaka Maoli people. It is where our cosmology is primary to, as well as many of the people of the Pacific Ocean. So to invest into this project is a direct form of institutional racism and religious discrimination against the Kanaka Maoli people, as well as the people of the Pacific, from Samoa, Tahiti, Aotearoa, throughout the Pacific Ocean. And there are a lot of Pacific Islander students in this university system as well. Thank you. The, the, the pool people are getting two minutes each. Was that two, two minutes? That Does was two minutes. Do you have one more sentence? Uh, yes. Um, so in my tradition, in the Hawaiian tradition, uh, the concept of leadership is to take care of your people. We take care of our people. However, because of these financial investments, it is very clear that the University of California is not taking care of the people in this system. All these financial, the, you have the childcare issue, you have tuition issues, but instead you are investing into a project that is oppressing my people, rather than supporting those who need that financial money immediately. Thank you. Thank and you. just to be clear, we have three more speakers on this topic, and they have colleagues um, further down the list who have pulled to them. So the remaining three of you will each get two minutes. She's, okay. she, she had her final right now, so. So Lico yes. Martin is speaking for Carla Thomas. Okay. okay, two minutes. I am a representative of UCLA, Pacific Islands Student Association, PISA, has gathered the collective signatures of thousands of your own faculty, staff, and students to express our disapproval of the construction of the UC's 30-meter telescope on Hawaii's Mauna Kea. Pacific Islanders and American Indian students at UCLA, along with Native Hawaiian activists, have worked with organizers across all of UCs, even extending into the University of Hawaii Colleges and Stanford. With this much public concern, the UC Board of Regents is required to address our concerns and come to the realization that we all have a human responsibility to protect Mauna Kea as a sac sacred site to indigenous people. Today, across the youth University of California, we are holding Mauna Kea Awareness Day to expose the injustices of the UC and ensure that the needs of the native Hawaiians who exist as your own students, staff, and faculty are met. So this, thank you very much. Mahalo Regents for having us. <clears throat> well, I think that we bring good news because we're, we're talking about something that you don't need to spend your money on. You know, you don't need to invest in this thing that has now become old technology. It's now become obsolete. And it, you know, and it, we have now left the time when destroying the earth to look at the stars is something that we really need to do. And you can spend that instead on really worthy endeavors that are taking place at this university and in your students who will be able to develop a better way of seeing those same stars. So, so mahalo for that. I would just like to say that I'm, I'm, um, I'm echoing the voice of those students you know, not just here in, at the University of California, throughout the University of California system, these students have been speaking out. Um, also at Caltech, Stanford, the University of Hawaii, the, many people are, are speaking out to protect our sacred land and to protect their own futures as scientists, as educators, as people who want to build a better world. That's what these young people want to do. And I'm here asking for you to please divest from this destructive project and invest in them. Invest in them and their future and all of those who support that future. 
Mahalo. Thank you. Do you have any other speakers? One, one more? Aloha. Uh, Ke aloha, Pishoda. I, I wasn't allowed to finish um, my point yesterday. Um, thank you very much for your giving us an audience here. Uh, I did come from Hawaii, and I just want to continue to say a few things. Um, it's very important to know that this investment is a violation of our human rights and um, the Constitution and many laws. We have gone to every level, all the way to the United Nations, to report on this issue, and we will continue if we have to. Um, I want to say also that you might be wondering why do we care so much, but the point is is that Mauna Kea, like all sacred sites, are important to this planet because they hold the biodiversity of the planet, and that's usually why indigenous people hold them as sacred. Um, the biodiversity, ev nearly every creature, living creature on Mauna Kea is either rare, threatened, and or endangered. So we are really on the brink of a new time and a new world, and we've got to make the change, and we have to do it now. And astronomy is a noble endeavor, but it is not one that we need at this point. There are 93 world-class astronomy places on the planet where we can look at those things. But in the context of real time, it has no modern relevancy at this point. Because looking back, you know, so many light years back through time is not what we need to save the earth. So we need to save the earth and we need to do better technology to do better astronomy is what we're needing. And so, yeah, and you know, sorry, I just wanna say the kia'i, the earth protectors are gonna lay down their body and this is gonna become a very serious thing and we got 67,000 signatures in four days in support of our position to stop the desecration of Mauna Kea. Thank you, thank you, sorry. Thank you, thank you. Okay, our next five speakers. The Native American uh, students, yeah? yeah? Yeah, the American Indian students, okay. Oh man, mahalo so much you folks for being here. Yeah, really, we really appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, and, and you stood here all this time. Oh my gosh, it's been it's been kind of a long, you know, that this is a classic thing where you know we had this rally and it's really strong and it's powerful, and then all of a sudden we encounter all of the bureaucracy and the helicopters and the you know people and, and people being afraid of our water bottles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so really mahalo. I just want to say we support y'all all the way. I'm Hawaiian, I'm not even Hawaiian, but you know, I'm here for y'all. Mahalo, mahalo, yeah, and our, our Pacific Island Ohana has been out here in force. It's yeah, so. Mahalo to you, Ohana. And, uh, you know, as much as we can push the bar, as high as we can, that's when as much people, more people can come under and hold that bar. So thank you for helping us to push that bar and hold it, okay? Yeah. And, uh, you know, and good luck on your exams. Mm -hmm. You know, this is an exam for us. Like Kelo said, we didn't know what we would encounter, but this is what it, this is the kind of stuff that, uh, because right now it's Mount Akea. Tomorrow, it could be something sacred here to your lives. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and the people, the regions, their responsibility to ensure that where they're getting their monies from and the, the things that they're doing, that they, that they take it to heart. That we're dealing with people's lives here. So again, mahalo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mahalo. And, the, and, and, and definitely the students of Mokuhonu this oh, is, yeah. this is, this is, you know, our tur Turtle Island in, in Kanaka, Olelo. 
that um, that's you know just being here on this land it's um it's really a blessing to have you folks you know and we've had um uh, you know we've been blessed to you know receive the the messages from the tongva people too and um uh, you know and and uh, just really means a lot so mahalo mahalo for having us on this 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 aina here Okay, mahalo. We're here in Chumash territory, um, Santa Barbara. Yeah, and, um, or I should say, what's the actual, I don't know the actual Sikton. name. Sikton, Santa Barbara. Sikton Village, Santa Barbara, California. Mm. Mahalo, mahalo. And these are our hosts today here at the mayor's office that we're going to go and see soon. And I was just kind of putting them on the spot to see if they could tell us a little bit about what, um, you know, about the things that are happening here in your lands. Well, there's a lot of things going on, but one of the things is that uh, different Chumash people are trying to get together, trying to implement self-determination, at the same time dealing with historical trauma, dealing with uh, our own history here in the coastal area. And um, with that, um, trying to identify uh, our rights and responsibilities of the land. So it's been, it's been since I've been involved, you know, 50 years of struggle and 50 years of protecting our sacred sites and 50 years of protecting um, and trying to um, recreate and also re-emerge ourselves with the native language, philosophy, and land. And so we're very blessed to be here. And our young people, uh, especially with our Tomo and with their language and with the songs and our culture is re resurfacing as far as what we are as Chumash people. Because Molly, it's all yours. Because like, can you introduce yourself and um, yeah. about like w w the things that you do? Yeah, well, uh, well my name is Cosmoli Lopez. Uh, this is my father here. Um, I'm involved, I, I try to be involved. So, uh, the community, you know, made me who I am and so it's my responsibility to give back in what ways I can and continue to learn and listen. Uh, there's so much knowledge, you know, I'm just beginning to learn about the traditional plant relationships, ecological relationships, the tending that uh, we need to, you know, do all over the land so that we can avoid these cat catastrophic fires like we've had here in Southern California. Um, and beyond that, I'm involved with uh, organizing at the high school, at Santa Barbara High School, we're organizing to have ethnic studies so that uh, all the students that graduate from the high school graduate having taken a course that, you know, takes a second to uh, consider the uh, critical history of the United States uh, so that all the students have an understanding of at least, you know, a little bit of the trauma that people around them have, have gone through and of these histories that aren't analyzed within the classrooms. And, you know, so we're trying to have uh, community control of education as much as we can so that we can have an education that is uh, really for the students and for the community, you know, not just educating these these partial truths and these uh, inaccurate histories but uh, you know realizing that these hist historical realities are connected to uh, where we are today you know talking about historical trauma talking about you know the the effects that this has upon our ecology here and so considering all that stuff so we're organizing to try to make uh, so that all the students have an access have access to that in their high school experience that's mainly what, what I organize around, but I also, you know, I'm honored to be a part of the Tomo Society and to paddle in our traditional plank canoe, and I'm honored to, you know, learn what songs I have learned and study under a few, a few different people that have really shaped my, uh, my understanding of the world and philosophy. So yeah, that's, that's what I do. Awesome, and you know, you, you guys at your school, you had some kind of a walkout, yeah? Yeah, well, we've had, uh, I think we'll, we'll have had three walkouts in the past uh, two years. Wow. We, we walked out when Trump got elected. Uh, we walked out for the Women's March and we walked out last year for school safety. Um, and with all of that, I think, you know, there's, at least within the students, there's this conception that these walkouts really don't do anything. Uh, but we have to understand that, uh, at least here in Santa Barbara in California, uh, the schools get paid by student attendance. And so, as with a lot of things in this uh, the capitalist economy we're living in, we have to cut to their 
how, how they make their money, you know? That's what they live off of. We live off the land, but they live off, live off of money, or they try to, you know? And we know that doesn't really work out in the end, but... Uh, and so, it's been in the context of these walkouts that we've had, we finally got ethnic studies to be a high school graduation requirement passed. But we know that the real work is not only having it passed, but making sure it stays good, you know? Uh, reform can only get you so far, and so the only way to, to do reform correctly is so that you know that it's not the end. Every step we take, you know, so uh, these walkouts, you know, have had their effects. You know, we've seen the school district, you know, start to listen to the students, you know, uh, and we know that uh, we're very much still far away from our, our goals, and so that we're, we're continuing to struggle, and we'll, we'll see what happens this year, but I'm excited to. I've been honored to work with a bunch of amazing students around me. You know, I can't take credit for it. It's been all collective action. So. Awesome, awesome. Well, I know it's just a few minutes before we're gonna go and meet with the mayor. So, um, do um, thank you so much, Kasmali. It's beautiful. One of, one of the things that always the undercurrent was in that we have to. Our mindset needs to be away from the colonial construct and more so than tied with just like Art Manuel talks about. He talks about in not only um, the, the culture, but also the economies. And also, what is our traditional relationship with the land, the ocean, the elements, and all that that we have to consider in order for to gauge the youth, engage our societies in the future. And it's not only just one thing, but the multiplicity of ideas tied to our traditions as well as young people, which I'm really proud, not only of Kasmali, but all our young people throughout the United States and our Turtle Islands of ours, and also the, the people in Macronesia, Polynesia, and all the different peoples that are resurfacing again with the water spirit, the canoes, the language, the traditions, in order to be become in balance and harmony with our Earth Mother. Mahalo, mahalo. And, you know, mahalo for hosting us, you know, as we're like trying to fight a telescope on our, our, our sacred mountain, we wouldn't be able to be here at the mayor's office if it weren't for, you know, you folks, the, the indigenous peoples of this land where, you know, the chair of TMT is here and, you know, but you folks are also here and, and have um, helped us and, you know, and, and, um, and we do that for our love of the people and the love of the land of uh, the Kanakamali people and all the different kupunas and, and men and women and spiritual leaders that give us the power. You inspire us so we can inspire others. And so because of that, it is not just one thing or not just but our collective humanity, our collective strength, our spirit. I remember that spirit. Remember the spirit not only of the people themselves but the land, the rocks, the minerals, the the other elements that we have so also dear, dearly to our lives and that this particular, what you do and your strength over there passes on to give us strength over here. So we want to remind the, uh, the Kanaki Malis and all the different people that we're still here, California new people are still here, regardless of what we call ourselves, and we reach out and we want to build those bridges in order, in order to build that rainbow bridge to all of us that are here and build that spiritual connections and their real connections to the people. I want to thank you and also Nico for coming here, sharing your stories, sharing your strengths. You walking in the real way shows us that there are people that care over there. And if you care over here, you care over, you, you care over, over there, you care over here. And vice versa, you give us strength and we give you strength, I hope. So uh, thank you very much. Eyo, mahalo. We're so much related because we have relatives in your in your veins, yeah. Yeah. and your your relatives is our veins. Yeah. It was a story a long time ago where some of your people got lost, and they ended up here. And then our people were so good looking that they decided to stay. <laughs> right? That's it. Why? No, this looks really good. Right? Huh? And, uh, <laughs> and they want all these women. They're you know yeah. they're out of sight. Yeah. So they stayed, but they got homesick, as the story goes, right? So they, so they decided to go back home. So we rebuilt a vessel, and half of them didn't want to go back home because they loved this area so much. What's there not to love, right?
So, so they got some Chumash men that want to go back there because you know, a young man always adventurous and, and whatever. Because Chumash society is run by men and women. We have our, we have our, um, our woods, we call them. Our woods that were in our midst of people that were, that were both men and women. It wasn't just like in this society, men, 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 men. Mm -hmm. It was you know, always that powerful medicine. The balance, yeah. That, that, that right. And so, so, the, so they went back to Hawaii. And then we forgot about them. Okay. And so what? Did we connect with them? Oh, one of our elders went up there when the powwow, they have a powwow over there. He was named Bob Rivera. And, they, and, they, and, and he's tall and good looking, you know. And so, with his wife, Natalie, so they went over there. Yeah, I think it was uh, arena director or something like that. So, some, some, the, the elders over there pulled them aside and told them a story about what happened. One of our longer vision, yeah. version there, yeah. sound, what sounds here. And so he was saying, so we have a history together. Mm -hmm. And then in 1976, the Hokalea, the Helic were established. And then 10, 15 years later was the Tiat, the Momarihiko, the plank canoe of the Gabrielno, Tongva, were created. Sometime later, the that's down in LA, down in Los Angeles, right, right, they were working right. and working uh -huh. with the Tongva people on their tea hut, uh -huh. their plank canoe. Uh -huh. And so, and with that, um, later on, we, we we built four canoes, and the main community community, community canoe was the uh, Ilya Un, and the Ilya Un still here. And then we made subsequently three more other canoes. The San Inez had their Muktamai, longer vessel, bigger vessel. And we have the Hoxalakoi, that is another Tomo, and then a glycerin salmon, which is down with another place down the villages down south of us. And then in turn, um, you know, we'll build another uh, smaller canoe, uh, the Tiat, and for uh, the community, for the museum, to tell their story, their canoe faring people, right, all along the coast. So within all this, and, we, and then 13, 14 years ago, we um, finally went on the voyage with, with our plank canoe, with, with the Elliot Wun, to the island of Limu, which is 26 miles off the coast. And that 26 miles off the coast was the first time in a hundred and some odd years they went to islands because it kicked all of us out, mm -hmm. all of us, and we scattered. You know, the Spaniards, the mission, mm -hmm. Mexicans, so, like Americans, Americans, America. they finally, uh, yeah. you know, um, uh -huh. uh, pushed us out, yeah. right? So, we finally reconnected to Limu, we finally connected to the ocean, we finally tr and get reconnected with the young people, the old people about the water, right? Mm -hmm. About this precious water, like right here. Mm -hmm. This is a person, our, 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 our water is a spirit. And I'm not saying anything different if you don't know already, that's a spirit that connects the mountains all the way down to the ocean. We'll go there. Yeah. The ocean are our sacred sacred place. But yet within that, we met connections with in 1995, the Hokalea came down here. In the organizing meeting for the Hokalea, you know what they said? They said, we can't find any Chumash. And we're like, oh, what? Well, I was there and I didn't want to be, I mean, I didn't want to organize it, but obviously when you get the call and you need to yeah, do something. Right. So we organized it, had a wonderful in exchange between the Hawaiians and between the two much people here and it, and it went down to Los Angeles and had their sayings. And then I think 20 years later or 25 years later, the Wakas and Wakas came down uh, from their voyage. And then we met them, we had celebration in San Pedro and in San Diego reminding them they were still here. And so with it, in the Maoris, mm -hmm. we have connections with them. And so, and up in the Northwest, we have connections with the Northwest, with the canoe, so the canoe families building, getting stronger mm -hmm. and stronger and stronger. It doesn't have the setbacks, mm -hmm. but we're getting stronger as we go along. The Northern country, uh, country up there, with the Yuruks and the Kuruks and 
and all those folks up there, you know, with their canoes, we have communications with them too. In fact, we got the redwood from uh, the Klamath River. Oh, yeah. You know, and uh, we have cultural exchange for this for this canoe we're building in Los Angeles. So that connect that yeah. connection is make strong. So when they talk about this land here, we talk about we're we are the direct result of climate change. The fire, it spread, it started all of Ventura, came all the way over here, burnt all the houses, scorched the land, and then the rain afterwards. A 25 feet, as you can see in the on the tree, 25 feet high. See the tree over there? Mm -hmm. The swell all over the bottom of the creek. Yeah. That's well. That that's well came down. That's there. its mark right there. Yeah. yeah. And it came down and eliminated everything in its path. And we just finally escaped. Our bathroom was there, right? Well, we, we, I've got to fix the bathroom. But yet, it shows to us that we need to pay attention. Mm -hmm. We've been talking about it. How many hundreds of years? Yeah. <laughs> pay attention oh, yeah, what's going on. Be, be, pay be, be, attention. Yeah. And then we need to, and, and not, I, like I told my kids, they're going, well, you know, ain't no problem. Well, it is, but I'm checking out, and that's okay, you know. I have no problem with that. But the people need to realize the next generation, they're going to have to be real careful, and they're going to have to listen real yeah. put in your ears and yeah. your soul and to see what nature's telling you. Because mm -hmm. that's their medicine. Just like the medicine yeah. gave you, it's the medicine we use, medicine, mm -hmm. the water spirit mm -hmm. that we have. Does that sound anything that you that, that, that resonates with you? Do 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 is the connection with that? Yeah, I mean, you know, of course. That's okay, and I'm hearing it, seeing it too, up and down the coast as as we've been here. When I had to leave Hawaii in the '70s, it was Leo Carrillo, the village there. Yeah. And they, they, they took care of me. There was no no one there except me. It was political asylum. And but it was the land there. I had my OP, I had my limo. Like That's the name seaweed, of the island. Seaweed. seaweed. Yeah. Limo I had my limo. And a lot of people go, What? Yeah, just yeah. I said, yeah. And I say, you know, over here, because we have a limo back home called Vavaiole and Sometimes it just kind of goes on the rocks over here. It looks like a Norfolk pine tree, and and so that's that was my direct um, nature thing. You know, I could smell when I go down to the beach. The same smell in the same place with the same things on the reef that I have back home. So I was good. In winter time, I had my bag of OPs and. I, but now, and that was in the 70s, you know, the early 80s, from 82, from 82 to 87, that's when I stayed at Rio Korea. And uh, until, uh, and only spoke to one person there in seven years. I didn't need, everything was nature provided, everything. The birds, the, everything. I mean, even the abalone, they even would call me on the, on the rock. One day I was, I was over there and I looked in, you know, for little peas and, and uh, all of the little, um, what do you call those shells? The ones, the black ones? Oh, the nata the, uh, the, the... When the water gets rough, all the, all the small little shells come on top of the rock? Yeah, the ones that, well, so, they're not peepees, but over here they have... Um, cockles. Cockles, cockles. Yeah, so it, it provided me, it fed me, and that's how deeply I became you know, connected by paying attention to nature. And, and uh, now, last night, in the youth now, okay, and I describe it like this, uh, Marcus, I had a dream about five years ago, which sort of told me where we were at in Hawaii and where to we are in the bigger, in the bigger picture. It's, I was looking out at a field where there was once water had flowed to an irrigation ditch in a field that at one in, in the past not too long ago that field would be planted with taro we would be eating food but it was enough to stand there and nobody was there just to get a sense of you know 
a chance maybe the buffalo will come back. Okay? You know, that's what we have. But so what happened was all of a sudden this huge like imagine a huge crocodile alligator, huge. Tremendous huge. Came right in the front of me. And this is uh, in your dream, right? Yeah, this is my dream. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> this part. And, no, and no. so, and my dreams is my, my, my they guide my. Right, 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 right. So, and it came up to me, and I, and it, you know, showed me that its entire body, except for the very top of the tail, was already loose. Dangerously loose. To the point where it could be life threatening. For a reptile that big, if it's if it's body parts that it had already come off that are transitioning, got caught on a tree or something like that, or you, if the sun became there was no water, it would bake. You, you could it wouldn't release, and if it broke off with the weight of it, it would rip the tail. And so it allowed me, I went down like this, and it allowed me to come underneath its skin, and I was helping to just get it right in a real critical spot like that. All of a sudden, four feet showed up, and these guys were arguing, and they said, wow, bah. And I didn't dare look at them, but they were telling me, oh, but how you in catch this? What, you in hook them? You in harpoon them? And they were walking around, see how did I catch this thing? They thought it was dead. The thing moved. That's the last I saw of them. Okay? But the metaphor told me we're getting close. Every living thing on Mauna Kea is rare, threatened, and or endangered. And that's why we need to protect it. And then the water. Um, is the water, the sources of our water, the sacred sites are the sources of everyone's water. So. That's why we need to come and stand here. But mostly to have everyone also remember that aloha is just everywhere, but it starts here. And it's required to move. And to move it, we have to share it. So, mahalo for sharing the aloha with us. Okay. I will pull one pool with a kuki ai bauna. Ikua! Ikula! 
carnaval. E cua, e cua o que, e cua co, e cua a mal, a mal caiulho, é o que é culia. 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 No TMT. No TMT. Recognizing the essence, the Akka, of all things. Even the ground that we're standing on, and the stone and the sand that made this sidewalk, it still is the stone and the sand, and it still has the essence of creation in it, like all things. And Kiakua, we ask you for a portion of that. To give to the board members that they will become enlightened and they will do the right thing. We ask you for them to help them make the right decision. Before the obstacle that they don't even know that it's an obstacle and to guide the people in their testimonies and their mind and their heart and their soul all be as one. Again, to enlighten and inspire these Board of Regents to stop perpetuating the fraud and the misalignment of science and the misdirection of education that will destroy life. Make all of us wealthy and healthy, wealthy with spirit, with manao, with a good mind and a good voice to speak so that we can help the others to overcome this obstacle. Namahalo kia kua. Namahalo kia kua. 
And let us also remember the Tongva people who, upon whose land we are standing right now and all of the history that goes into, um, into this, this land and this sacred place right here where we're standing. So as we work to protect our sacred mountain, we also stand with the people of this land and of all lands, of Samoa, of Tonga, of Belau, of all of the, and so many other lands, all of the, the beautiful, precious lands of the sacred earth. We stand together for its healing. And in doing that, that is what moves our mana'o forward because that healing is needed everywhere. Oh, aloha. Aloha, my. I know all of you. I, I mahalo for taking up this issue. Right? I'm from Maui. Oh, right? mahalo. So I think I just want to just check. I was planning just. I'm gonna sing a song. The last verse. It's the fame of famous as Hui Aloha. Hui Aloha were the marchers who just marched. I've been marching for 50 years from this time. You just keep going and to make Pono what is left on to be done. And then to all the Lahui, the whole world, all the people, the consciousness. then we can walk you folks inside and then get you signed up for the public comment. Okay, thank yeah. you. Last verse. Yeah, yeah, mahalo, yeah, yeah, mahalo. Ano ano na pua o Hawaii ne o you see it the kaua kau holo meke au pu Ya 
For some reason, they've taken the bones of the people, the Ohlone people, and they have imprisoned them here. Far from their homes, far from their traditions, and far from the land that they love. For no reason. And Firstly, has a history of not recognizing. We can see that from here. Brutality, genocide, desecration, literally hidden in plain sight. So, what I would like to ask for those of you who knows the words of Puahahe, you guys all know. Do you guys know what they mean? Does anybody like to share with us what Puahahe means? The basic outcome that we will love our land forever, as they, as our ancestors were. So, in honor of those and in prayer for the hopes that they will someday be returned to their homeland their own people. I would like to do you mind reading this again to all the hills of I just want to say as 
of students here at UC Berkeley and as a representative of the students, the indigenous students.
great mountain of the God who. My land is the land of Makapa, Koko, Hina. It is the low lying land of the goddess of the moon. That is where I come from. I come to you, all of you, all of you, face to face, to share my humanity. And what was very clear from the message up there was dialogue is closed. We do not want to recognize your humanity. That we as human beings touch upon them as real flesh and blood of people. That their science is not divorced from that. We are here to have them see it, to have them feel us. We are not wrathful, violent people. And when we go to the Mauna, we will stand. We will stand in prayer. But we came here to share the fact that they will come with guns. The people that their 50 to 175 million dollars in investment will help buy. They will come with guns. They will come with violence. In the most recent situation up in Maui, Haleakala, about a year ago, Kai Preyas, was violently taken down and his neck was stepped on him because he lost consciousness. To this day, he suffers neurological complications as a result of that violent people of peaceful, prayerful, and not the love. Who believe in science? Because all of the people who are there standing on the mountain also are fighting in very deep and powerful ways to research and participate in traditional technology, research, and science that we are really give to the world during these incredibly dark times, incredibly dark times that the entire planet is facing. We stand with the millions of indigenous peoples throughout the world. Hey who are at the front lines of every ecological battle, who are fighting for giving their lives. I raise a voice here for Alberta Cateras, who was murdered, assassinated, for standing up for the Aina, for standing up for the sacred. I stand up here for Kai Preyas, who was brutally taken down in defense of Haleakala. And I stand here to speak with all the humanity in my heart to the people of the UC system in Berkeley to say, Eo! 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 No na ka. We are still here. Despite every attempt to destroy us, to kill us, to eradicate our culture, we are still here, and we will remain. And we are here by the thousands, our ancestors behind us, our descendants in front of us, and all the people who have rallied from the whole land to go to the Mauna. See you on the Mauna. <laughs> the time comes. We are here to say we are still here. And the 30 meter telescope will never be built. Hey oh! Follow me.
program that teaches travel, business, and casual conversation skills in a new language, including French. That's a lot Available of butterflies. Available in the App Store or online at Babbel, B-A-B-B-E-L dot com. Support for KCRW comes from UCLA's Center for the Art of Performance, presenting Batsheva Dance Company on Friday, March 15th and Saturday, March 16th at 8 p.m. at Royce Hall. Their new work.